Hello, and welcome to the fourth video in the series of simulation processes for student SAE teams. Videos 1 through 3 have taken a relatively deep dive into the standard workflow process of a simulation engineer, starting from some design work through meshing, assigning boundary conditions, and creating a working solution. The fourth video in the series will provide a full walkthrough of this process for some suspension geometry using NX Nastran. This video serves to reaffirm lessons learned in the first three videos, as well as teach new topics such as multiple component analysis. The simulation will be a static A-arm test intended to show what stresses exist within a component assembly under normal car loads. By first looking at the full assembly, we can get a good idea of how our smaller assembly fits within the mechanism. We'll notice that the part we'll be working with consists of four separate pieces of geometry, each of which I have selected here so they can be easily seen. Taking a look at this suspension, I notice that it's an A-arm suspension which gives me clues as to what the load path of the mechanism will be. Specifically, I see the two bolted connections on the top and bottom connected to the A-arms, as well as this third which would connect to the steering rod, although the steering rod geometry seems to be missing. The first thing I'll do is open the parts I'm working with in a separate window. Once here, we can begin the process we're now familiar with and start by creating a new fem and sim. This time, I'll leave everything to the defaults in this menu. I'll select an appropriate solution name and click OK on everything else. The first thing I want to do for this model is define 1D connection nodes where my boundary conditions are. For each place, forces are being applied or constraints, I'll apply RBE3 connection nodes. I'll use point to face, and for the point, I'll choose the midpoint between two bolt holes. For the faces, I'll use the bolt holes. I'm using RBE3 because I want forces to transfer as these are the load paths. Once I hit apply, this blank window appears which I've only ever seen come up on my NX. But regardless, I'll do this for each of the three connection points. Next, I'll define a 3D TET mesh on our object, assign an appropriate element size, a material for my mesh collector, and leave the rest to defaults. I'll do this for the rest of the components as well. Once our parts are all meshed up, we'll want to glue them together. I'll do this using mesh mating. Once again, I'll use my box select to just drag over the whole thing and it'll automatically create the pairs for me. I can verify this by turning on show through within the simulation navigator. Actually, I've forgotten, I want to put a 1D node at the center of this assembly as well. This is where the load will be applied as if it were the weight of the vehicle from the tire. Just the same as I did last time, I'll make sure I select all of the faces on the outside as well as the center point, and I'll be using a RBE3 connection as well. Before I move to the sim, I want to make sure I do an update on the mesh since I've made the connections as well as a new RBE3. Now I'll move on to the sim, and the process should once again be pretty familiar. First I'll add three fixed constraints to each of the bolted locations, and then I'll add a load to the middle of the geometry. All that's left after that is to turn Auto MPC on and to solve. This solution only took 13 seconds to solve. Now that our solution is run through, I can double click on my results and check them out. Here we can see the magnitude displacement. We can animate it per the usual. And we can check out the Von Mises stress as well. 
For this particular model, the displacement of 10% looks pretty severe, so I'll replace it back to absolute, and that way we can analyze looking at the colors without being distracted by the huge displacements. Another piece of post-processing I would likely do for this model would be to exclude the nodes surrounding the 1D connections, and that's so that we could pay attention to what's happening for the actual part, and not get those exaggerated stresses around the connection nodes. 